Hi everyone, Eva here. Hope you are all having a fantastic day. My name is Eva Klein. I'm a certified infant and child sleep consultant. And today being Friday, I am going to be answering our Friday focus question, which is one question posted by a mom in the My Sleeping Baby Facebook community. So before I go ahead and, and address the question of the week, I just wanted to remind everybody that I have a $1 trial going on right now for my online sleep Bible program. So you can give the program a try for five days for a dollar and see if it is for you. The program includes a step-by-step -step detailed hold your hand um, program that basically tells you exactly what to do in order to address basically pretty much any and every sleep problem out there. In addition to getting access to my exclusive library of training videos, you also get access to a members only Facebook group and community where you can ask your questions, get details, re detailed responses from yours truly and support from a really wonderful um, supportive community of like-minded parents. So I'm going to post the link below, but the, the coupon code that's going to be expiring today at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is stop being tired. <laughs> so I'll post the link below so that for those of you who want to give the program a try and, uh, and really make some big changes and get your little one sleeping and improve your quality of life, you can do so. Now, Without further ado, let's discuss the question of the week, which was posted by a mom named Grace. And she wanted to know, on average, when most children <coughs> are ready to transition uh, from taking one nap a day to not napping at all. And she wanted to know if anyone had any tips for her on um, actually surviving the transition. So in a nutshell, the answer to your question, Grace, is wh when do most kids transition from napping once a day to not napping at all? Um, it's kind of a funny answer. It's really anywhere between two and a half to five years of age. I mean, the range is massive when it comes to when kids typically are ready to drop that nap, um, which makes this nap transition a little bit unique in that, for example, uh, when you compare it to the other nap transitions, tr most babies transition from four naps to three naps, somewhere between four and six months of age. Um, most babies transition to a two nap schedule somewhere between seven and nine months of age. Most babies transition to a one nap schedule somewhere between 15 to 18 months of age. And then from there, so here you can see with all these other nap transitions, the age range in which it typically happens or in which most babies and children are ready is fairly narrow. There isn't this big, massive range. But yet when it comes to the transition to one nap, the, the age range in which this happens or in which this can happen is actually very big. Now, I will say that it is somewhat rare for a two and a half year old to be legitimately ready to drop their nap. And it's also somewhat rare for a five year old to still really need to be napping. Um, but both of those extremes are very plausible scenarios. Most babies, babies, most children I find are typically ready somewhere in the three to three and a half year range. That's when um, the majority can get through the day without falling apart, without transforming into a monster and still get to bed okay <coughs> and, uh, and sleep the entire night without, um, without really needing that, that daytime sleep. Um, however, if you have a four-year-old that still needs his nap, or you have a two and a half year old who really is just not tired anymore and can get through the day until 6.30 or seven o'clock before going to sleep and then sleeps around the clock no problem, then go with it, right? I mean, if you ask any teacher that works in a junior kindergarten classroom, um, here in Ontario or in Canada, we call it junior kindergarten, which is basically um, you know children who are four years old entering school, you ask any kindergarten teacher and they'll tell you that they always have one or two kids 
who are literally falling on their faces by three o'clock because they haven't napped because their bodies are just so used to napping. Um, as I said, it's, it's not especially common, but it's not unheard of either. It's, it's within the realm of normal. So how do you deal with this transition? So what, what also makes this transition a little bit unique and that it can take time in that most of the time with the other nap transitions that I just described, it's pretty normal for a baby to get used to their new schedule within a couple weeks or so. This kind of transition from napping to not napping at all can take a few months potentially. And it doesn't mean that it's a few months of torture. It just might mean that maybe some days he needs a nap and then other days not. Or maybe it might mean that, you know, your, your three and a half or four year old has started JK. And so throughout the week, she's not napping and she's going to bed much earlier than usual. And then on the weekends, she catches up and, and naps on Saturday and Sunday. All of those scenarios are perfectly fine. So you don't need to worry if there's a little bit of inconsistency where sometimes she naps and other days she doesn't. It is a very normal part of the transition to almost wean themselves off of that daytime sleep where maybe Monday, Wednesday, Friday, they end up being fine without a nap, but then Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and sometimes on Sunday, they're falling on their faces and need that daytime sleep to catch up every couple of days. That's also very normal. So the message I'm trying to, I guess, send here is that there is a very big range in terms of when children are ready for this nap. And there's a very big range in terms of what's considered, you know, normal and appropriate and fine and nothing to worry about when it comes to how this transition actually plays out. Now, the biggest piece of advice that I would give you, especially for the days that your child is, is not napping, is to make sure that you get them to bed earlier than usual. Chances are they're going to be tired. If they're likely when they were napping, their bedtime may have been a little bit on the later side, which was fine because they were napping. But now that your child is no longer napping, you don't want them becoming overtired, which can cause them to get wired, become hyper, get a second bout of energy, or, you know, worst case scenario is they're, they're also overtired, but they become, they transform into a monster when they become overtired. Um, those, that's, that's not fun either. So, uh, and, and either way, even if you have a monster or you have a really hyper yet happy child, both of those children are going to really struggle to fall asleep if they're going down too late and they're already in that overtired zone. So avoid that completely. Um, I think a really common question people ask me is, how do I know if my child is ready to drop their nap? Usually it's what the, I think the best general advice I can give you is, is to look at their schedule and assess the nap if the schedule is no longer working. So for example, if you have a three and a half year old that naps for an hour every day from one until two, and then goes back to sleep at 7.30 and falls asleep with little to no problem and sleeps around the clock until 6.30 the next morning. Don't worry about the fact that all of his friends aren't napping anymore. That schedule is working beautifully. And clearly he still needs that nap. And it's not interfering with bedtime. And it's not interfering with nighttime. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. However, let's go with that exact same scenario. So your three and a half year old naps from one until two used to fall asleep nicely at 7.30. Now you tried pushing it a little bit later, maybe till eight o'clock, and he is just bouncing around his room or jumping around his crib and just refuses to go to sleep, doesn't fall asleep until 9.30, and then he's up at the crack of dawn at, you know, 10 after six. That's a very, very typical scenario where you're probably going to want to begin either reducing the nap or even experiment and get rid of it and see if it makes bedtime and nighttime go a little bit more smoothly. Um, around here, that was more or less what was happening with my then, uh, how old was she? She was about two years and 10 months, my younger daughter, when her one hour nap 
from 1 until 2 or 1.30 until 2.30 was really impacting bedtime and she wasn't falling asleep until well after 9 o'clock. And yet she was still waking up at the same time every day, regardless of whether or not she napped. And so mathematically, the nap was actually taking away from her 24-hour sleep totals because without the nap, she'd fall asleep at 7 and wake up at 7, no problem. With the one-hour nap, she wasn't falling asleep until after 9 and still waking up at 7. So that's less sleep. She was getting about 11 hours of sleep um, over a 24-hour period instead of 12 hours without the nap. So in our, in our home, I mean, that made things crystal clear that the nap was detrimental and getting in the way of her overall sleep totals. So I just wanted to kind of give you an example of, you know, how to be approaching the nap. But again, you want to look at that first example. If the schedule is working and your little one's well rested and bedtime's not a problem and nighttime's not a problem and early rising isn't a problem and the nap itself isn't a problem, then there's no rush to get rid of it. And there's no need to worry about your little one napping sometimes and not others as a, as a way of transitioning from napping to not napping at all. So I hope that this was helpful. And uh, once again, I've got a coupon code for the $1 trial, a really common, for my Sleep Bible program, a really common question people ask me is whether or not my Sleep Bible program addresses toddler and preschool sleep issues. And the answer is a big fat yes. I have a whole section in my program that gives you a step-by-step -step guide on how to tackle toddler sleep issues head on. So the program is not just for babies and younger and older infants. There is a whole section on toddlers and preschoolers geared towards kids up to age five for those of you who may be struggling in the sleep department with your slightly older uh, or younger or older toddlers and preschoolers. So again, the coupon code is stop being tired. It's going to expire tonight at seven o'clock. So if you want to give the program a try, definitely don't wait. I hope this was helpful and that you all have a great day and wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.